Hi, boys and girls, it's Mrs. Kessel. Today for your asynchronous keyboarding work, you have two things to do. First, you're going to watch this entire video, and then you have a quiz to complete. The quiz is based on this video. Also, please remember, if you have not turned in your locker yet, if you have not turned in your All About Me or your typing packet proof, those three things, which we're already due, you need to get those turned in. Actually, your typing packet's due today. Um, if you're watching this on Tuesday, if you're watching this video on Wednesday, it's late. Get it turned in, okay? So you're going to watch this whole video. Pay close attention because then you have to take a quiz based on this video. So in this video, we have another keyboarding teacher from a different school who does a wonderful job showing keyboarding technique. That means how you're supposed to hold your hands to type properly. So I want you to watch closely and listen carefully. Let's see what she has to say. Hi, it's Mrs. Hickson. We're going to be talking about keyboarding technique. Now, I've sent to you an attachment called Proper Keyboarding Technique. I like to call this gentleman the dude because he has great keyboarding technique. His shoulders are relaxed. He's sitting at a 90 degree angle. His wrists are straight and he's looking directly at the monitor and his feet are flat on the floor. Now I know you're working from home, but I need to encourage you, encourage you with keyboarding technique because one of the purposes is for you to be protected your wrists, your fingers, your neck, um, your shoulders are all protected when you're using the right technique. So make sure when you're doing the drills that you are at the computer sitting in a 90 degree angle. Take your keyboard, move it to the edge of the table. Take the B key and line it up with your belly button. Now you've already learned home row off the online software. Remember home row on your left hand is A, S, D, F, and on your right hand is J, K, L, semicolon. Now, I have a question for you. If you haven't noticed, I have some objects in front of me. What in the world does a bike, a tennis ball, a coin, and magnets have to do with keyboarding technique? I'll show you. First of all, when you learn to ride a bike, did you just jump on the bike and start riding? Or were you like me? and you got on the bike and you fell a couple of times. Well, what happens is you have to learn how to balance. You have to learn how to keep pedaling and keep that endurance up until you don't even think about it anymore. That's called building your muscle memory. That's what keyboarding is all about, building your muscle memory this way. Some of the ways that I can show you how is we need to make sure that our fingers are curved. It's a good way to protect your fingers too. And what I like to do is I like to take a tennis ball. I like to hold it and show how my fingers are curved. You can even hold it against the keypad to just kind of feel how that is. That shows you how curved your fingers need to be. The other thing is, is I have a coin. Our dude tells us that we need to keep our wrists straight. Take a coin, any denomination, place it on your wrist. When you're typing, if your coin can stay on your wrist, you know that you're keeping it straight. I'm going to type the word keyboarding, K-E-Y-B-O-A-R-D-I-N-G. Now, the magnets. I want you to use your imagination. I want you to pretend that your fingertips have magnets in them and that home row has magnets in them. As you know, magnets stick together. That's what I want you to imagine. As you're going through the program, you're going to be learning our first and lower rows. I want you to think of your home row as having magnets in your fingers and on home row. So when you reach to get one of the new letters, you always return to home. So if I reach to get the T, I'm always going to return to the F. If I reach for the N, I'm always going to return to the J. That's another good keyboarding technique to keep you safe and efficient. So let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and type keyboarding, K-E-Y-B-O-A-R-D-I-N-G. And again, I return to home row. With these simple remembering 
building your muscle memory before long, you won't even have to think about these techniques. They'll become part of your muscle memory. You'll increase your speed and your technique. And before you know it, you'll be keyboarding just like the dude. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. All right. So those are some really important techniques. You're going to have to build your muscle memory. Compare it to like when you first learned how to write your name when you were in like preschool and kindergarten. You had to think about every little move, like how to make each letter. Now you just write your name and you don't think about it because the muscles in your arm and your hand remember what to do. They have muscle memory. So when we start keyboarding, we are not going to be looking at our fingers. And just like riding the bike, we might fall a couple times, we might make mistakes, that's okay. But if we practice it, practice it enough without looking at our fingers, eventually we'll get that muscle memory. We hold our hands kind of like a C in order to be able to reach all of the keys. If you're keeping your hands flat on the keyboard, you're not going to be able to move up and down the rows. She also spoke about keeping flat wrists. So when I type, I don't want my wrists like this. I also don't want my wrists bent like this. I want flat wrists and no part of your arm should be on the table. And then finally, she spoke about the magnets. That home row that starts with caps lock and goes A, S, D, F, G, H, J, K, L, semicolon, apostrophe, and enter. That's home row because that's where your fingers live, okay? They might go to visit another key, but they always come back to home row. You'll also notice that when she was typing, she did not just use her pointer fingers. She used her whole hand. We are going to be learning certain keys use certain fingers, okay? So after you have viewed this video, now you're going to go into Schoology to the next thing down, which is your quiz. You are going to take this quiz. You get two tries. If you fail the first time, you must take it again the second time. If you fail the second time, then you fail the quiz. So I suggest making sure you have watched this video very carefully. And if you fail the first time, you don't just take it again, you watch the video again before taking the quiz because this does affect your grade, okay? Please turn in your All About Me, your locker, and your typing packet proof as well. Do this quiz, and then you are done with your asynchronous work for today. If you have any questions, send me a message, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. See you tomorrow morning.